In this example, we want to build a simple car rig. So I just uh, want to move my car around and the wheels uh, should rotate and I want to have a few more controls over my car. So here we have a model, pretty simple. And to understand what we have to do, it's always good to take a look at a very simple example. I built the scene here. This is our wheel from the side and the red line is the circumference of our tire. So if I hit play, you can take a look at what happens here. So this example shows us what we need to calculate. So we know that if our um, tire moves this distance, which is exactly the circumference of our tire, it has to rotate for 360 degrees. And this is pretty good because we can calculate all the stuff and we have a range mapper so we can later use it and map this distance, the circumference of our tire, to 360 degrees. So let's go back to our car and take a look at the model. So we have our car here, a master null object which contains all the parts. Make sure that the pivot of the car is exactly at 000, zero, zero and that your car is placed on the floor. This will make a lot of stuff easier later. And we have the body which is just the car and the uh, windshield and all the stuff. And we have our um, four wheels. And as you can see I've put the, real, the wheels in a few null objects. And this is just because I want to split um, all the rotation axis of my wheels. If we take a look at this one here, in this example, this is wheel number two. So if you would only have this one wheel here, you want to um, to control two axes. So the first axis would be this one here. Oh, sorry. Come on. This axis here to yeah just make the tire roll. And the second axis would be this one here to uh, steer for the for the steering of the car. And the problem is if you only have one object and you start to rotate it, so something like this, your second axis that you want to control is now rotated in a way which you don't want to have it. So it's always good to split out those rotations. So here I have one null object to control this rotation and another parent null object to control this rotation. So now I can rotate it this way and then take the second null object and rotate in this way. Um, the first two are my front wheels. So here those front wheels are in two null objects because I want to control two axes and the rear wheels we just need one control null object because they don't steer. Okay. So what do we need? We need something like a formula to calculate the circumference of our tire. And to do, to do this, there's a pretty simple way. Just uh, type, type in what you need in Google and you will find a link to Wikipedia or some other websites. Then click it, scroll down. Everything here is pretty good explained. And we have our formula here, which is, which is uh, this part. Circumference equals pi times the diameter of our of our wheel. So this is pretty good because now we have a formula and we can use this one in Expresso. So let's go back into Cinema and take a look at this one. So I will create an Expresso tag just on my main null object. So I have it here. And first of all, we should start with our wheel. So this one here at the front was wheel number two. So I will take this one. And we need the diameter of our of our wheel. So the size, maybe just the Y size of the wheel. So I will create an output port, coordinates, scale, Y. If we now uh, create a result node to read out what uh, this port gives us, we will see that we have a problem. If I connect it, it's set to 1. This is because if you set uh, my uh, wheel is selected right now and I will set this one to scale because this is what the node gives us, the scaling. And this is set to 1 because this is the scaling of our coordinate system, of the local coordinate system of our wheel. And uh, 1 is not very helpful in this case. So to do this, we can do another thing. So there's a node called bounding box. Bounding box. 
And the bounding box is basically this yellow box, which is like a cage around our object. And this bounding box can give us the exact uh, size of our object. So it should be something like this, this number here. So we take our bounding box. It wants to know uh, from which object we want uh, to read our data. So let's unplug this one, delete this port, create an output port for object. So now we tell the bounding box node, please use this object. And we get box size on this side. And if you take a look again at our information bar, it's a vector. So we don't need the whole vector, we just need the Y um, component of this vector. So I will take a adapter, vector to reals, connect the box size, and here we have our three dimensions. And if I now connect my Y to the result node, you see that we get uh, the exact measurements of our, of our tire. So step one is accomplished. Very nice. So if we now take a look again at our um, formula that we need. So the circumference equals pi times the diameter. So now we have the diameter. And now we need something where we can type in our formula. So this is pretty easy because we have a node that helps us, which is called formula. Pretty simple node. Um, if we click on it, you see here is a field where you, you can type in any mathematical formula that you find in your old uh, math books from school or on Wikipedia or somewhere. You can type in here. And of course, you can also create input ports value uh, where you can feed in some numbers for your formula. So I will connect my Y size to this, oh, sorry, to this port. And now we should just type in our formula. So the problem right now is that if you take a close look at your keyboard, you've, you won't find a key which is called pi. And uh, there's a solution for this. So just click on help show help and if you go in reference cinema 4d and under cinema 4d prime just unfold this one and scroll down all the way down you'll find a category called called uh, appendix and if you open this one you will find a document called formula so click on this and make this one bigger and I would re recommend to you uh, save this image and print it out and pin it somewhere on your wall because you will need it uh, all the time and it's really cool to have it there. So this basically um, gives you or tells you the language which Expressor understands. So for example, if you want to round a value, you have to type in this one, round and then your value in here. Or if you want to calculate a square root, it's SQRT and your value in here. So you'll find a lot of useful stuff in here. Also logical operators um, and also constants. And here's the constant pi, 3.14 and so on. And we see, okay, we can just type in pi. So we close this one. And our formula is pi times our diameter, which we uh, can read out here. So we connected our um, the Y size, our diameter, to value one. So there are now two options. You can check this box and type in value one, or you can rename this port and then type in the name of your port. If this is not checked, and this is how I usually like it, um, there's a variable for this port here, which is called dollar one. So just the dollar sign and one. If you um, create a second port, it would be dollar two. So very easy. But now we have our formula here uh, where everything is set up correct and we can create a second result node, connect it here. And here we have the, di the circumference of our uh, tire. And the cool thing now is if you resize your uh, wheel, the calculation um, will give you the right number in here, no matter which size your wheel has. So this is pretty, pretty handy. So in this lesson, you learned how you can um, calculate the circumference of a tire. And in the 
next lesson we will continue to rig our car.